Welcome to the August 20th planning board meeting. Today on the agenda, we have review minutes from July 16th. Um, we're gonna talk about bylaws that um, uh, we should probably work on over the course of the next, uh, next several months. And uh, we have a delegate to regional planning, Nancy, I don't know, did you decide for sure whether you wanna? Yeah. I... Okay, okay, so we're gonna look for a new delegate from the board for regional planning. And then we have affordable housing trust committee update, which there is none. Oh, we haven't okay. met. You can scratch that. And then um, um, agenda items for the next meeting. So let's start with the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyone want to make a motion? Move we'll to accept. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And let's see, um, bylaw timeline. So we now have the governor has signed into um, law the housing, the changes to the, um, um, the Affordable Homes Act has been signed into law. So we now have, um, we will need to change our accessory dwelling unit bylaw, which, you know, we've known, but we now know, have the parameters from the state, um, some of them, this is all new. So it's, you know, being um, digested by some of the main law firms. Um, I've asked Donna to provide us with a summary and she will. I just talked to her yesterday um, and I've been in touch with Michael. So a couple things, you know, we, some things we know um, and, you know, but we will definitely need to, with the accessory dwelling units, we have until I think 180 days okay. um, until that's becomes law. So we have a little bit of time on that one to work on it. And um, so, so that's, you know, that's something we'll need to address. I, I spoke to Patrick and he's willing to do it with me. He just has to do it after the third to get through this. That's fine. So, so. I was thinking that short-term rentals was something that you could mm -hmm. work on with him. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, accessory, accessory dwelling units. Um, why don't we talk about that one a okay. little bit? And, but if you would be willing to, is, are you guys all right with that? If Liz works on the short-term rental bylaw with Patrick? You're more than welcome to join. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> oh, let me think on that. Okay. Long and hard now. <laughs> I think you, you'll report back. I mean, yeah, I think we will. And it's all yeah. going to get discussed anyway. Yeah, this it won't a, get voted on. Right. It's just discussed. Yeah, no, that's important for, for any of this mm -hmm. um, that we, you know, touch base with yeah. the planning board so that everybody has a chance to weigh in at, <clears throat> at certain points. But, you know, when that happens, mm -hmm. we'll be up to you. Okay. Okay, just use your judgment, key moments. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, and it might not be that difficult. Um, you know, we have we have certain information that we know, and um, um, we we cannot we can regulate. My understanding is that um, ADUs are a by right. Um, in single family residential zoning districts. <clears throat> and, but we can, um, we can limit their use. We can say they cannot be used to short term rentals. Mm -hmm. So there's some things that we know, but, you know, we'll learn more as we go. Okay. So if you're interested, you can just go online and check out, um, there's the Affordable Homes Act fact sheet that's readily available on the mass.gov website and you can see there's um you know that's there's a summary which you can just download and take a look at 800 million dollars will go into the affordable housing trust fund um <clears throat> 425 million for housing stabilization investment fund 275 million for sustainable and green housing initiatives 175 million for housing works infrastructure program uh, and it goes on, okay? 
um, 20 million for smart growth program, um, restoring dignity to public housing. There's 2 billion for public housing. Um, so this is, this is a big deal. It's a lot of money. It'll be interesting to see how they, they divvy up the 2 billion around the state. For public housing. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they will be looking at density, but I don't know, 800 million that will be divvied up amongst trust fund committees like the one that you're on, I assume, right? Yeah. I can't, I won't assume anything until I yeah. see it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so there's information and as I get more information, as I get information from, hi, Eric. My apologies. Not at all. From town council, mm -hmm. I'll forward that along to everybody. Thank you. That'd be good. Okay. Okay. So, so Liz is interested in working on short-term rentals. The sign by law, we talked a little bit about Nancy's idea, which is a great idea. Um, I see that as a fairly simple fix. So, you know, but we'll, we'll tackle that. Um, wireless devices, uh, that's something that Michael brought to my attention and, um, that would be a new bylaw and I, it would, I think it would fall within the zoning bylaw, not the general bylaw. And he is going to, I spoke to him last week about that and he is going to gather information from Lennox because Lennox has this bylaw. What is that one? It's um, the wireless devices. It's these devices that will increase, um, you know, our, will improve our Wi-Fi locally. Oh, so like repeaters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but apparently some of them are are sort of large boxes, so we might want to be thinking about um, you know where they they can and cannot go at a certain point. Um, the um, the federal agency that oversees telecommunications. I'm blanking on the the acronym. They will, you FCC? know. FCC. I think so. Yeah. They will step in um, to me to get you know. Yeah. To make sure their needs are met. So I think Lee's doing theirs and their street lights. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. How big so, are they? <laughs> so, you know, we'll gather we'll look at what's being done in Lennox and and potentially Lee too. And uh, bylaw for that already, or we have to create a bylaw. Oh, no, this is a new this would create be a new, new bylaw. Yeah, a new bylaw. Um and then the LPOD is something that um, I'm interested in working on with Eric. And we've had conversations about that. Um, we both have long connections to the lake. And um, that's something we would like to, uh, to, to pick up. Um, so ADUs is something that we will definitely need to do. Um, let me talk to Michael a little bit more about that if you guys are okay with it, before we add that on to your- ADUs, what are- Accessory they? dwelling units. What? Accessory dwelling units. Oh, okay. Um, Eric, the the governor has, has signed into law the Affordable Homes Act, yeah. and that has implications for our accessory dwelling unit wording in our zoning bylaw. We'll no longer, in a, as of February 2nd, it will no longer what she signed into law will be the law. So we have we have a time frame within which to address that. Good. Okay. Um, any any comments, thoughts, discussion? What happens if you do nothing with the ADUs? Mm -hmm. Well, if you do, really good question. If you do nothing, um, we will have we will. I, my understanding is we will just be working with whatever the state wording is. And what we can do, what Michael has told me, is that what we can do is set setbacks. We can have setbacks. Um, we need to be reasonable because the state wants this avenue for housing. Um, but we do have certain things that we can control. Okay, so like height, um, setbacks, um, size cannot be less than 900 square feet. That's a state parameter. Um, 
So uh, that's what we had anyway, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we had voted on. It's something we definitely want to review. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. To see what what we can do with it. Yeah, definitely. Do you think we would benefit from uh, input from Berkshire Regional Planning? Um, we tried that before, and I sort of felt like uh, we had the have the knowledge of the town and that this is something that we can handle locally. Yeah. I have a few questions about LPOD if we if we, if we want to look at that. Sure. Um, and I, I, I'm new to this whole process and everything. So I, I have some questions about what falls under the purview of the planning board and what falls under the purview of the select board. Yeah, so what? And so in the LPOD, um, they reference uh, other sections, of course, mm -hmm. and have a, an example here. And it all has to do with not grandfathered lots, basically non-conforming, uh, pre-existing non-conforming structures. And, and, and what the LPOD does is it references as long as you adhere to, um, what do they say? Which page are you on? 6.3, I think. Uh, right now I'm on uh, page 30. Which is just section six. Non conforming structures, uses, and lots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's not that's not part of the LPOD. The LPOD references sections that part of section six. Um, so, and so, uh, in my, in, in, in my reading of it, which may be, which may not be accurate, I don't know. Um, it seems like It seems like these special, the, the non-conforming structures, uses, and lots kind of flies in the face of the intent of the LPOD. Um, and what I mean by that is when it comes to um, the special permits that are issued uh, that grant, say, a 600-square-foot cottage to become a 3,500-square-foot uh, house that's no closer to the lake than it was before, okay? But it's obviously, it's much larger. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the stress that that puts on the... On, <clears throat> on that area close to the lake is what the LPOD is trying to mitigate. It can't do it. Mm -hmm. It's happened around the lake, okay? And, and I understand that people certainly will have different um, opinions and ideas about this of what should be allowed and what shouldn't be allowed, but it appears that from from what I'm reading in the LPOD, once they say as long as it conforms to section six point one, everything is fine. It throws it it throws it into the lap of uh, the select board and out of the planning board. Now I may be reading that wrong. I don't know. So in the past, um, the select board and I'm trying to find the wording here, but the select board has reviewed. The footprint. Right. And 
in a sense, you know, and then the rest falls, the rest of the LPOD provisions fall to the planning board. <laughs> Okay, well, here's, 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 an, here's an example. Again, you have a 600 square foot house, cottage, okay, one story, and it's 25 feet from the lake, okay? It may have an exposure to the lake that's only, whatever, 30 feet wide, maybe. Um, and what the special permit process allows them to do, and this has happened, of course, all over the lake, mm. is that 600 square foot footprint becomes a much larger, as long as they stay, depending on what your zone is, either 35 or 50 feet away from, from, their, from the lot lines on either side, as long as they don't get any closer to that 25 feet from the, in fact, they don't even have to be in the same, it hasn't, you don't like the, one of the constructions that's going on right now, it doesn't even have to be the same footprint. They move the whole structure right. to, a, to, a, to a better part of the lot, maybe. Okay. The causeway properties did say that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of properties that are on, on 183 right now. Um, you know, they, 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 I don't want to get too emotional about this. They're, they, they, they blast away the, uh, the hillside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they can make a you know, two lane driveway that goes down to this thing. They move the entire, from the original footprint of the structure, they move the entire thing mm -hmm. and then expand it until, the, you know, the, this last thing that's being built there, it's like the size of a small hotel. And this is all, and this, and this is happening, you know, every, every time one of these structures is taken down. And these are, these are lots that have plenty of room that are outside of the LPOD. To do all of this, there's one. I should have gotten the actual address, but if you're on the lake and you're looking at the boat club, there's a lot that was developed. God, 15 years ago now, maybe just to the right of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they kept the little cottage that was next to the shore, and then up on the ridge, uh, they built their house. You know, it was whatever. It's probably 300 feet from the, from the shore, but they had the property. You can't see the house from the lake at all. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't blast away the uh, hillside to make a, you know, this, this- Which side of the lake? See the lake, lake from the house? 183. 183? Yeah, they, they can see it through the trees kind of thing. Again, I understand there are different, I mean, I've owned property at the lake. I still do. There are, I understand there are different opinions about all this, okay? It's just, it's, it, to me, it seemed, if, if the LPOD was put in place to preserve the property around not only the Stockbridge Bowl, but other bodies of water as well, it seems that the LPOD that is meant for the rest of the town or for the town in general lies in the face of that. Yeah, no, I... I, and I don't, I don't know what can be done about it, or, or, or anything like that, or, or if anything can be done about it. You know, so, but I, but I, that's my, that's my concern. Having, I, I mean, I spend, I mean, I'm, I'm on the lake four or five times a day throughout the year, mm. and so I see all this stuff that's happening all the time. Yeah. And the one lot, the one lot, with the exception of the Tanglewood property, which has not been developed yet. Um, the one lot that was subject to the LPOD regulations, in other words, you can't, can't build in the LPOD kind of thing, was the old camp property that Jane Iredale built mm -hmm. on. And she, she was forced to build, I shouldn't say forced, maybe she wanted to, but she was not allowed to build, build at all within the 150 feet zone. She had to build back. Because there wasn't a pre-existing. Right, there wasn't yeah. a pre-existing footprint. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, so, that, so the law or the, 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 the regulation basically applied to one person on the lake. And it's a good thing that it did. But if there was a way of making changes to it so that it would in the future preserve what the LPOD was, I believe, what the LPOD's intent was, I think that would be beneficial. 
Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there's certainly the intent here is um, it's right up there in the purpose. It's um, aesthetic and it's conservation. So. So if you put a, you know, a six bedroom house, 25 feet from the shore, mm -hmm. uh, 183, there is no septic system. I mean, there is no sewer system. So that has to be dealt with somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, like I say, I don't know what the solution is or if there's a solution or what can be done or whatever, but that's a, uh, that's, that's kind of a, a sensitive spot for me. Well, I'll tell you that um, at one point I talked to Ray Miaris. This was, you know, he was, he's retired now. He was yeah. our former town council, but um, he mentioned to me that when he came on board with the town and this would have been, I think in the, um, early nineties, um, he warned the select board, the select board had just ushered in new zoning, you know, and he warned them, I think it had passed town meeting. So he warned the select board that there were two problematic bylaws. One was the LPOD and the other was the cottage era state bylaw. Well, those have been our problems. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, he felt that he was at the time he was told by the board it's too late. You know, they probably felt we'd just gone through this whole process and, you know, they didn't really want to revisit it having just gone through it all. Yeah. You know, gone past town meeting and everything. They were like, oh, please, you know, just we don't want to open up that can of worms. But um, I think he felt that, yeah, it's they were, you know, they would be problematic and they have. And, you know, my opinion is that the, um, they have, uh, you know, the LPOD has failed us. Do you recall what his problems were with it? We didn't get into specifics. Yeah. We just felt that, you know, it was a, a flawed bylaw. And I, I'll, I'll emphasize that the, 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 the construction that's going on there now, who, whoever, whoever it is, I have, they're, they're just, they're just playing the game. I have nothing. I don't have any problem with them kind of thing. It's just the general, I, I would think that if there's a way of um, addressing that in the future, that it would do the, uh, it would do the bowl a lot of good. It's a public good. Lot coverage is generally the mm -hmm. way you do it. And, but that's a slippery slope too. Yeah. I mean, the, the LPOD is the LPOD. And so if you certainly, if you own property beyond that, that's what the LPOD is saying. Build back there. But if you don't, but if you don't, that's a different that's a different thing. But if you don't and you own a postage stamp lot, mm -hmm. okay, that's not a. I don't. I think that the LPOD should. I mean that the that the uh, non-conforming pre-existing structure statute law whatever. Uh, should be modified in that case so that you don't have somebody building a two and a half story building that uses every square inch of the of the property that's available to them under the current law. Mm -hmm. They have setbacks, side setbacks. I know they have setbacks. And they yeah. can only go 35 feet. They can go two and a half stories high, but all these things are, they're, they're, a, they're one story. They're one story structures originally. Yeah, small. And that's, and that's, and there's, especially in an area where there's no sewer system. And then you, know, you, you get you, into, you know, a project blocking the view of a project behind us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then you get into topography, too. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that. If you know, anybody's been on the lake, on Pontusic Lake, and looked at the shore anywhere there, that's kind of the Stockbridge Bowl properties are much uh, fancier, much nicer, I'll, I'll say. I guess that's a personal preference or whatever, but... Uh, Pontusic Lake is like bang bang. There's, there is there basically is no regulation, so that people have built everywhere, you know. So oh, it's each other. <laughs> anyway. Well, I you know I hear actually from a lot of people around the lake too who are not happy about it. You know, because a lot of people around the lake are are doing something in scale. Hadn't we talked about one time about changing the percentage? We did. We did talk about something like sort of um, 
amassing by law. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm, I think, you know, why don't we gather information? And this is something that David Cameron can help us with as well. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely the. I went through his red lines and everything like that. And, you know, I had a couple of questions on some of them, but they're basically just wording and uh, um, providing a little more information and stuff like that. I think the idea that I'm sort of putting forward here is a, it's quite a bit more radical than, mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. And like I say, people may agree with it or not. Okay. Well, why don't we work on it and um, and see what we get? And um, we'll touch base with the board along the way. Well, what other ways are there to control it other than lot coverage? Because I, I don't see any other. Uh, you could, well, you could. <laughs> the um, You could make a distinction um, if you are within the LPOD, if you are property is completely contained within the LPOD. Um, you could you could limit the the height of the uh, the structure. You could what I would like to do in such a case, if you're going to build within the LPOD and you are and, and you have a pre-existing non-conforming structure that has a certain footprint, that's the footprint you got. You can't go any further in any in any other direction, because the LPOD says you can't build in the LPOD. It's only because you got to get out of jail free card that you have an existing structure there that allows you to do anything in the first place. So I would say, you, you can if you have a six hundred square foot house there or whatever that. Um, you could you, you can move that footprint to a better portion or to a better area relative to the lake that um, as long as you don't once again uh, encroach on the setbacks on either side, uh, but you can't make it any bigger or maybe you can make it 10 percent bigger. OK, but you can't make it 600 percent bigger, you know, just because you're within the letter of the law as far as setbacks are concerned. That flies, in, again, it flies in the face of the LPOD. And if you do have property, there's a different category, if you do have property that's both within the LPOD and outside of the LPOD, then if you want to build something big, that's where it goes. And that's why I use the example of that, whoever it was who developed the property just to the uh, if you're looking from the lake just to the right of the boat club, I, I can get there. I mean, I think there's there are things we can do. Part of the problem is that it's it's you know kind of a really confusing. It's written very. I think it's very poorly Everything written. It's confusing. very confusing, and <laughs> um, you really have to, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, I think well, it's, it's very easy. Well, the yes, LPOD the is an old is overlay it. district, though, itself. Yeah. Well. It's like I an guess. overlay over the overlay? <laughs> well, I think just a reimagine of, of it. I think we just, you know, we need to sort of go through it and, and figure out part of the problem is it's just not clear. And that's where you get into trouble with bylaws. Well, and, I think when they wrote these, too, I mean, the thing we got to keep in mind, too, is that engineering is, has has changed versus when these things were written. You know, they can do things now that they couldn't do when they wrote those things. Well, this was, some you, of know, this, you know, some of the stuff they've done, I don't think was possible back then, you know. The tight tanks and things yeah. like that. That yeah. or, or just the way, you know, they remove rock and, you know, just a lot of different well, uh, things. The, um, You know, yeah. the mounds that you can build, like, over on one, uh, at 183, but right by the causeway, 
you know, where they built the, uh, mm. the mound to yeah. make the, it, you know, uh, make the sewer, uh, mm -hmm. or not the sewer, but uh, the septic. Um, well, some passable. of this, you know, Jack Spencer told me that, you know, some of this was, I think he, you know, he had, he was involved with this. He was on the planning board. And um, at the time, uh, Title V had sort of ushered in all sorts of different um, types of septics. Plus, we had the sewer expansion. So what he was hearing from, you know, different parts of town was concerned with how this was going to impact development around the lake. And it has. Um, so this bylaw was, you know, so supposed to be the answer to concerns about how new developments and, and how septics were treated plus the expanded sewer system would impact the lake, but it hasn't worked. And, you know, my hope is that we can figure out a way to make this well, they quite certainly clear. didn't have those jet things that they have now where, you know, they, they could put it in, in somebody's driveway and it's fairly noticeable. I'm sorry? The, the jet, you know, they, I don't know what it's called. It's not a jet pack, but it's, we looked at one over um, on uh, the, the Lake Drive area where they put the jet pack into the, it failed in the front, so they put it in the driveway. What's a jet pack? Yeah, it's a, is that it's a system. I don't know, but it it's smaller and it's still uh, effective. You mean a tight tank? Gary? No, it's no. Still, no. But when you talk about the new technology, there's a huge benefit to that too. Because oh, sure. we've come a long, long way in protecting yep. the surrounding area of a septic system. Even there's even mounted much, much better design yep. and control, and 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 the, where they're allowed in the first place, all that type of stuff. So I I, I hear what you're saying, but in another way, I'm going. Thank goodness. Oh I sure, but it's just so I'm, much better. It allows they very rarely fail. Oh yeah, for sure. But it's just that it allows people to to then do yeah other things. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the point. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, Wayne, you're you're absolutely right. One of my coworkers, you know, was on site inspecting and he says the water is, you know much, much better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you won't want to drink it probably, but <laughs> oh, but it's much, much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, I'm 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 definitely in favor <laughs> of all that. I think it's definitely worth a look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, so that's good, and... Have I taken up enough time on that one? <laughs> that's that's great. Great. I mean, yeah, that's no, it's good to hear. You clearly really thought about it. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, good questions, too. Yeah, thanks. So um, next we have, unless there's anything else there, um, that will be some work. Um, next we have... Uh, the delegate, the planning board delegate to regional planning, and Nancy has been kind enough to do that for Nancy. How many years have you been the delegate? Mm -hmm. Since I first started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> I don't know, like five years. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, do you want to talk a little bit about you know your experiences and what's involved because you're the closest to it right now? I found it very interesting. Mm -hmm. Not much applied to South County. Stockbridge in particular, but but it, it brings you up to date on what's going on in the state, mm -hmm. what they're looking at, like the railroad going east west, or mm -hmm. um, especially things going on up North County for parks and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, did they, it's, did it's, they talk at all about the um, the uh, affordable? The Affordable Homes Act was that discussed at commission meetings? I haven't been to the past couple of meetings. Okay. What I found when we had first one person and then another when we were talking about parking in downtown, I thought those folks were great from regional planning. They actually, mm -hmm. you're not trying to sit here and reinvent the wheel. And I don't know where those folks went, but we were working on it and then all of a sudden we weren't. 
Um, how that happened, I'm not sure, but I thought they cut through a lot of the stuff that we struggle with because they knew it already. They've done it in five other towns. Mm -hmm. And if you want to tweak it here or there, you could, but this is why it works and this is why I probably won't. Mm -hmm. So I thought they were very helpful that way. And if they were able to help us on some of these issues, I thought they were great. Yeah, we hired them to come help yeah. us specifically. Yeah. Yes. But um, no, I, I, I don't want to do that position. <laughs> <laughs> Any other takers? I'm up to my ears in affordable housing. All right. <laughs> so I have a call. I kind of figured that would be the case. So I have a call out to... Um, to the uh, the executive director, Tom Matusko, and I'll talk to him and see if um, I think there's probably um, a pretty easy way. They send out emails all the time for us to get, um, you know, the updates that are covered at the commission meetings. So I know Christine Rathmason reports to the select board. Right. That's true. Right. Right. She writes quite a long report. Yeah. <laughs> Almost detailed, like secretary would. Yeah, the things so, that are going on. Yeah, so potentially they could just forward that to yeah. us too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. All right. So. Um, that's that. Um, Liz, you don't have anything. Will you guys be meeting soon, or with Patrick? You no, know, with the Affordable Housing Trust. I have no date. No date. No date. Okay. All right. So, in terms of. Um, the housing plan, I thought I would, um, I've spoken with Jan and I think, you know, I thought I would schedule that for a public meeting. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Jennifer, how much could, do you, how much, you need 14 days to advertise for a public hearing, right? Minimum. Okay, so it wouldn't, you have we, to do it twice. we wouldn't have time to do it for the next meeting, but maybe the meeting afterwards. Okay, so why don't we put that down for um, check the Jan schedule too? She's not here all the time. So. Okay, all right, I'll check with her on that. But tentatively, we'll say, um, Eric. So this is partly for you because we've all sort of been through this, but it's mm -hmm. new. For you. <laughs> so let's see. The day is the twentieth. Um, the third, September third is the next. Two, first Tuesday, and then... Do we actually meet that day if there's an election that no. day? No, we wouldn't. Nope. We can. I mean, it's just the primary, so... <laughs> just the primary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still don't think it. Okay. We can. I don't think there'll be parking. All right. Okay, so no meeting on the 3rd. Um, so the 17th, I'll touch base with Jan... September 17th, is that enough time for you to to get up and running with the housing plan? You have a copy of it, right? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I've looked at it. Okay. <laughs> so I'll talk to uh, Jan about putting that on. Um, on the agenda and then I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. You look confused. You're, you want to publish it in the paper? Well, it's a pu just have a public hearing to, you know, go over the plan and the planning board can vote on it. And okay. yeah. To, I'm sorry, I'm confused. What are we, what are we going to vote on when there's a public hearing? Whether to, you know, approve the housing approve the production housing plan. plan. Right, the yeah. one that they've been trying to get approved for the last two yeah. years or something. Or? Yeah, it's not quite a year. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, Maybe a year yeah. and a half. I, I've heard the yeah. yeah the angst about it. Yeah, yeah. Let them be nice. Yeah, yeah. The ADU or the short term? I don't know. No, that it's it's just this is it, Nancy. Plan. Remember um, the beginning. We we're talking about the government coming with its own. Is that what? No, um, this no, is no, the, no, no. This is here. Let me show you. And that the affordable housing. Nancy, is working on. I'm confused. Yeah. Remember this. <laughs> Yeah, I have that right here. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's the thing that we want to talk about with the public, that whole thing. Yeah, just run it by, you know, run it by the public, dot our I's, cross our T's, and, okay. and be done with it, move on. I think that's what 
um, the Affordable Housing Trust Committee would like is for us to to vote on it. Yeah, they, they, yes, they wanted would. that for a yeah. while, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. So. We'd like to put that to bed. <laughs> so I'll touch base with Dan, with Jan and, and um, on the 17th. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is the 17th our next meeting? September. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Anything else? I think so. No. Okay. Do I have a motion? Anything from the audience? Oh, anything? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing there. Okay. I'll make. I'm interested in, in how you were going to you know, deal with the bylaw changes you were talking about. Mm. You've been through them before, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great.